Hello, welcome to Wyvern Minis. Um, back talking about Hero Quest again. Um, as I've shown in my previous couple of videos, I'm looking at upgrading the miniatures in the Hero Quest game system. Um, but there is another thing that is the best thing about Hero Quest, which is expanding Hero Quest. And I know the conventional wisdom is, is that the only way to expand Hero Quest is with more Hero Quest. But I've already expanded this one, um, which I forgot. It's got the Keller's Keep and the Witch Lord expansions inside the box because I put them all in because that Felder foam actually fits all those those two expansions as well as the original game system. So I went against the conventional wisdom and got the upgrades. We've got Rise of the Dread Moon, Mage of the Mirror, and Frozen Horror, which at the moment are all in exceptionally good deals on Amazon because it's uh, Black Friday. Um, I unfortunately ordered them shortly before Black Friday because I am not very good at seeing into the future. So uh, <laughs> I paid more money for them than that. But there you go, that's how the cookie crumbles. Um, the Mage of the Mirror is the newest one and it's got a slightly different kind of packaging which is interesting. The other two got the classic uh, cellophane on the outside um, whereas that's got a kind of um, cardboard thing holding it together. I guess that's good environmentally. Uh, anyway, I'm going to rip the packaging off these and open them up and have a quick look and see what the miniatures are like inside because again, I might be looking at upgrading the miniatures in these boxes um, to go along with the ones that I'm doing in the main Hero Quest box. Okay, so I'm not 100% sure uh, which order these expansions are supposed to be played in or which order they came out in. Um, I think the Frozen Horror was first and I think it feels like it's the uh, it's the next one after you've done the original game and the uh, the Witch Lord and Keller's Keep expansions. Uh, so anyway, I'll start with that. Hopefully it's right. If it's not right, let me know in the comments. Um, so we've got some extra board tiles. So you can swap out some tiles within the rooms for something a bit different, which is nice. Some of these extra bits and pieces, I'm going to be replacing these anyway with printed pieces as I've talked about in the main game. Some, yeah, reversible tiles. That's pretty cool. Like that. Now this is perhaps the best thing. Ooh. New dice. I think that's a really good move because uh, there's not enough dice in the original game. I think uh, more dice is always a good thing. I thought Rise of the Dread Moon was next because it had the cellophane around the outside rather than that, uh, that card kind of protective thing, which seems to me like a newer um, kind of development. But uh, from reading the back of it, it sounds actually like the Rise of the Dread Moon continues the story from the uh, Mage of the Mirror Quest pack. So, you know, maybe this is actually uh, the third one. Anyway, I'll open this one second. <clears throat> Just like the Frozen Horror, got some extra tiles in here to make a nice sort of courtyard for the Elven Realm that you go into. And finally, the Mage of the Mirror Quest Pack, which I think reading it seems like it might come second in the order. Um, because it sounds like it's going into the Elven Realm, which you uh, then go into even more with the Rise of the Dread Moon. Um, I actually quite like this cardboard sheath around the outside. It seems like quite a sensible thing to do. It means that that can be recycled, which is a good thing, isn't it? Uh, but it, yeah, it looks quite nice. It fits quite cleverly, um, reduces the plastic. So I'm surprised they didn't do it with the other ones. Anyway. Uh, more adverts for the companion app, which you should probably download, and uh, yes, yeah, more more tiles, bits and pieces, double-sided tiles. They're quite nice, and some magical crystal balls and things. Okay, so major the mirror. We've got these tiles and tokens and things. Come to, of course, we've got a quest book. We won't look at that yet. Now I really quite like this this new furniture. That does feel that feels really solid. I mean, it's solid in the main game, but that f maybe feels a bit more solid. 
I really like the styling of it. This is supposed to be more like elven furniture. But yeah, that's... I think that's maybe an improvement over the base game in terms of quality. Um, I certainly wouldn't be looking to replace these bits because they just look and feel really nice. There's no no flex in there, there's, there's, there's nothing They're nice and weighty. They look great, so I'm more than happy to get those painted up. Uh, I believe that some of the um, tokens go in here to represent the mirrors, magical mirrors you go through. Um, perhaps there's scope to get something printed out in 3D uh, to represent the mirrors, which might be a bit more exciting to have something 3D. Uh, elven weapons, you know, nice and delicate for the little dainty elven hands, I suppose. Um, it's quite flexible like the one in the main game, but actually, yeah, again, slightly more robust, which is ironic for elves, but there you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, it looks good. There's some more cards in here. Um, now, what about the figures? These are elven warriors. I'm not quite sure what's going on with them. There is some flexibility there, but I think it the cloak feels good. The cloak is, that's really quite... I would have thought, based on the uh, the main game, that that cloak might be quite flexible, but it's not. It seems to be... I guess this is a replacement for the elf in the main game? I'll have to read the book and find out. But yeah, a little bit of flex. I think... I think quality-wise, these figures feel better. Some sort of elfy sorceress with a wolfy staff. Which again, that's quite solid. Yeah. I think I think from a quality perspective, these miniatures seem better than the ones in the main game. Um, so, well... I have to sort out the ones in the main game first and it'll be quite a while before any players are managed to get here because there's a bloody lot of quests in the books. Um, but yeah, perhaps there's a, there's scope to to leave these miniatures as they are and not worry about it. Well, let's have a look in the other boxes. I started off with this one because I already had it open, so I'll, uh, I'll get the other ones out and have a look there. So, Rise of the Dread Moon, which potentially comes after this uh, Mage of the Mirror quest pack. Yeah, a couple of mirrors again. I mean, presumably the elf miniatures are the same. They certainly look the same. Same solid cloak, flexible bow, but that's, that's okay. Um, I think the, the sharpness and the detail on the models actually looks... Yeah, I think that looks better than the main game. I like that. Got some special doors. Magical seal on the door, perhaps. Uh, some more elven furniture, but it's not, it's not the same piece of elven furniture as in the other... the other one's bookcases. That's a... Uh, so that's that's nice. I mean, that's a nice expansion because you get more different pieces to work with. Again, some sort of mirrors, so it could be upgraded. Quite a lot of cards. I'm glad I bought a load of uh, a load of sleeves for the cards, so that should be able to cover the expansions as well as what's left in the main game. Um, who's this? Maybe that's the elf again. I have a feeling, well, I'll have, have to double check, but I have a feeling this is representing the elf in the later stages. So the uh, elf in the main game doesn't have much equipment. And then the... Uh, the mad mage and mirror picks up a shield. And then this one's more fully armoured. Perhaps that's what it is. Maybe it's a continuation of the elf's quest line, so that's why this one comes after that. Anyway, again, I'll have to read it properly. I'm just speculating. But in terms of miniatures, I'm actually really very impressed. Um, I'll see. I might I might still decide to um, 
replace them with some 3D prints anyway. Um, but maybe, uh, maybe not such a requirement. So Frozen Horror, this one I think is quite distinct. Um, certain amount of going outside in the ice, I think. So that's quite cool. Quest book. Now I think the best thing about this one, best thing about the Frozen Horror Quest book, is the extra dice. I think that's brilliant. Um, I mean, who doesn't love a bunny dice anyway? But uh, that's my one of my issues with the main game is you haven't got enough dice to play this other own. It'd be, you know, when we play D&D, &D, everyone's got their own dice and the Dungeon Master has their own dice, you know, so you just roll in front of you and you don't need to keep swapping. Um, with Hero Quest, you only get whatever it is, six dice in the box. So if you're rolling for a hero that's doing four or five attack dice or the gargoyle or whatever, um, you have to keep remembering how many hits you've got while the other person rolls their defense. Whereas at least having one set for the uh, the games master for Zargon and one set for the heroes makes a lot of sense. You don't necessarily have to have a set for every single character, but it might be nice if you did. Um, and obviously there are lots of third parties uh, where you can get dice from or you could just get your own dice and paint them or whatever if you wanted to or you know print them off. But uh, just the fact you get some in this is good. And I believe in a couple of the expansions that are coming out soon, I think they're out in America already, but they're not out over here. Uh, I think you get some dice in those as well. There's a fiery one with some sort of translucent orange dice. But yeah, I really like those. I think they look great, being sort of icy. So uh, that'll be a, that's just a fine addition to the game, um, which will go in the main box uh, regardless whether you're playing this quest slot or not. You know, I think that's great. So I'm going to go straight for the big boy because he's calling out to me, some sort of yeti or something. Now that. It's pretty hefty. Ooh, I like that on the bottom. I mean, get some Play-Doh out and stamp him around. <laughs> That'd be good. Wow, he's got a molded base as well with the flagstones, and he is—he's solid as. Bit of flex in that axe, but you know, not a lot. That's a really, really nice model. I'm impressed by that. That detail looks really good. A little bit of join lines there you can see, but that's not very noticeable. And the join line is, is going along where the armor is, so it's, you know. Do you know what? That's. I was really worried about this guy because I'd seen him and I thought he looked cool on other people's pictures. I was really worried about that axe, and that is that's pretty damn straight. Oh yeah, I'm impressed by that. That is very cool. And what have you got? Oh, there's more underneath here. Oh my God, there are more character sheets. Brilliant. I mean, we haven't used up loads of them yet, but you know, more character sheets is always good. These bears, snow goblins. Ooh, difficult to get out of these. I have to get some foam. So these haven't got the nice molded bases. They've got a little bit of texture on them though, which is nice. But that's, I mean, that's solid. That's as solid as Yeti, I suppose. Really, really strong. Oh, this bear. Let me come. Yeah, solid, nice. Well, you know, yeah, even these little frost gnomes or frost goblins, I don't know. They're, they're pretty solid as well. There's not a lot of flex in them at all. Got some frozen doors. I'm really impressed by this. Um, the, the sheer disappointment I had when I opened up the main box because of the quality of the models is gone. Okay, that's that's a flexible sword, but it's it's a thin sword. Of course, it's going to be flexible. You know, they've actually with with these other models, I think they've thought about it, made them a bit thicker. It's the same as with Reaper bones or anything like that. The ones that are thicker, or the Knolls as marvelous miniatures, nice thick. Uh, bits and pieces, they work really, really well. It doesn't matter that you've got a slightly flexible plastic because you've got a really thick, chunky model. I mean, that's obviously going to flex. It looks pretty good. I mean, that's maybe these guys are ripe for uh, replacing with a, with some prints, but they're, they're not bad. They're not, they're not as bad as the ones in the main box, which really made me uh, want to change them. And these ones have come out nice and straight as well. I mean, again, flexible, but 
not bad. The fact they've got them holding with two hands is sensible. So, uh, yeah, well, fantastic. I'm really impressed with those. Um, these expansions look fantastic. I haven't even delved into the books to see what the quests are like, and it might be quite some time till we get there. But I'm going to carry on printing my alternatives and getting them painted up for the main game, play some games of the, the main game because we haven't completed that quest line yet, and the Keller's Keep expansion and the uh, Return of the Witch Lord. Um, and then hopefully by the time we've played for all of those, <laughs> I'll have got these sorted. But perhaps it's a case of just painting these lot up. And I don't know. I do like the flagstone bases that I've printed off. Um, and obviously these have got their moulded bases so they won't be on those. But I could paint the effect on or, or not worry about it. Might be overthinking it. I sometimes overthink things. Occasionally, my wife would say, always. But that base, that, that model, I think, yeah, brilliant. Well, wonderful stuff. Um, thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you soon um, for some more Hero Quest painting and perhaps uh, playing. All right, thanks a lot. Bye.